Um, and when you're 15, 16 or whatever, and you, 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 you just buy, bought a moped, you know, you think you're Barry Sheen, you know, you go out there and you think, oh, you know, what a great way to live. That's, that's the way to be. By 1975, the new Suzuki RG500 had seen through its stormy adolescence of breakdowns and failures of the previous two seasons. Rider and mechanics knew the bike was a winner. 75 was going to be the year, so everyone was very much on a high on an early visit to the Daytona track in the US. Daytona's high banking makes it a unique and dangerous circuit, and team manager Merv Wright made sure that Barry was aware of every risk. The track guy said to watch going in to the south banking and coming off the north banking. He said it's still damp out there. Is it? Yeah. Well, I was at the right end of the pits with Merv Wright. And as he came down, then something happened, uh, which uh, post-mortem suggested was uh, to do with the tower. Uh, the bike turned head over heels and threw Barry considerable distance down the track. I'm not really sure, you know, you see these things, it's all over in a flash. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure whether he was actually hit by the bike. He might have been, but it all happens terribly quickly. A British TV crew filming Barry's practice laps ensured that a worldwide audience witnessed the horrific high-speed crash. Barry slid 275 yards on his back, losing so much skin it threatened his kidneys, and breaking his right collarbone, two ribs, his right arm and left thigh. It, it was a gigantic hammer blow, not just to Barry, not just to British motorcycle sport, but to world motorcycle sport. Even in his hospital bed in Daytona, Barry was giving interviews and telling people how it was. Uh, and in those days, that was something entirely unique. And I remember watching the news uh, and seeing Barry Sheen lying in his hospital bed and saying what had happened at a time when you would have expected him to be lying there and feeling sorry for himself and saying nothing. Amazing. As it is at the moment, they just drilled the bone underneath my knee and put a rod through it and stuck it in traction to keep the bones apart and make it straight. Then when they've pinned that, it should probably be six weeks or a couple of months, then it'd be OK again. Barry's road to full recovery was overshadowed by a worry that took him back to the operating theatre, an event he also realised that would be a useful tool in promoting his newly found celebrity status. Ever since I broke my leg in Daytona, it's been on my mind that if I was to crash, and, in fact, break my leg again in the same place. It would bend the pin, and then it is um, a major problem to get it out. This is the fracture that Barry sustained originally, and uh, we move on here to the situation where he's had a nail put in it, and now the fracture is united, and what we're going to do is remove this nail. The surgeon, he'd got a pair of pincers or something on the end of this pin, and he was literally hammering the pin. You could see it coming out, and they, they produced this great long pin, and, and I was sort of, not on the verge of pain, fainting, but I was feeling very, very queasy indeed. But yes, you're right, only Barry.